hope you're doing well. Quick announcement, if you don't know this already, uh, I've launched a new place to listen to audio podcasts. We had a snafu with the old Matt Lewis in the news feed. So if you like listening to these instead of watching them, go search Matt Lewis Can't Lose. That's the new podcast name. You can find it on iTunes, hopefully everywhere podcasts are found. If you don't want to watch on YouTube, you can listen, download, if you're on an airplane, whatever, our interviews there and this stuff, whatever this is. I don't know. It's me talking and reacting. And I don't know if we're going to keep doing it. It's a little awkward, to be honest, but some of the videos have gotten good responses. Others haven't. So let me know if you think this is worthwhile, worth doing. Today's topic I want to talk about Republican dysfunction, which I think has been highlighted this week. It's really been on display. There are a couple of overlapping examples. I want to get into both of them. But I want to start with the one that I think is the most concerning, the most troubling. And that is the decision of of Wisconsin Representative Mike Gallagher, smart, young, conservative Republican. Very, you know, he was the guy kind of leading the charge to force TikTok to sell. a while back, he announced he wasn't going to seek re-election. This past week, he announced, hey, I'm hitting the bricks. I'm done. I'm out. I'm gone. What does that say? I want to talk about it after I play this clip. Um, this clip will set it up, and then I'll respond on the other side. The congressman has decided to quit his job rather than deal with a toxically dysfunctional GOP House majority. Mike Gallagher of Wisconsin just started serving in the House in 2017, relatively young guy. And he's kind of a standard conservative Republican. He's got a plum assignment as the head of the Select Committee on China. He voted with Trump most of the time, voted in favor of tax cuts against abortion. Today, he announced he'll be leaving Congress, wait for it, not the end of the year, on April 19th. He, he, he can't take it. He needs to get out. He's not even going to serve out the next 10 months which will leave the Republican Party with one of the slimmest majorities in history. Last month, you might recall, they lost the special election for the seat formerly occupied by George Santos. Then Colorado Republican Ken Buck resigned. His last day was today. Again, he's not waiting around till the end of the term. And now Mike Gallagher is like, peace, everyone. As of tonight, Republicans have a 218 to 213 majority. So they can only lose two votes on a party line bill. Once Gallagher leaves... They can only lose one vote. All right. So Republicans, razor thin majority. They can basically afford to only now lose one Republican defection if they want to pass anything. So that's part of the story. But I don't think it's the most interesting part. I also want to note that clip we just showed. It has George Santos. And obviously, uh, he is part of the story as to why Republicans have such a thin majority. But he doesn't really fit the trend that I want to talk to you about. He was a a bad actor who was pushed out by his own colleagues. Um, The problem, I think, is is with people like Mike Gallagher and Ken Buck, mainstream Republican, pretty decent, good, fairly sane uh, conservatives who are choosing to leave. They're not being pushed out per se. They kind of are in a way, but they are choosing to leave. That is what I think is interesting. A healthy institution does not see its young rising stars like Gallagher fleeing, running in the opposite direction. But that we don't have a healthy Republican Party uh, and certainly not in Congress. Right. And so that is what we are getting on the micro level. It's it's somewhat you know tragic. Right. You could imagine that a, that a Mike Gallagher uh, in a world where he would have been successful uh, and it had made a good life or at least a, a, a couple of good terms serving in Congress. Maybe we don't want lifetime politicians necessarily. Um, but think about the macro trends. Like, what does this say about a Republican Party where the normal, good, young, rising stars are leaving? Not great, right? And then never mind the fact that Mike Gallagher was very smart and I think he was doing really good work on China. No, I don't think that anyone's going to be able to really replace him. So it could have national security, foreign policy implications at the end of the day. I mean, nobody's indispensable. There's 435 members of the House. But still, I think Gallagher was one of the sharpest. And and certainly when it came to the issue of China, arguably the greatest existential threat, you know, 
um, depending on who you are. So anyway, not not great. Um, it's also interesting, of course, that Gallagher uh, and Buck both decided not just to retire, but to leave immediately. Like, I think that speaks to how toxic this environment is. They've clearly decided that you can't, you know, in the case of, of Buck um, and Gallagher, I think, you know, they had a couple of choices. One is they could have fought against Trumpism and stayed. Probably wouldn't have worked out well. The other is they could have gone along with kind of Trumpism and MAGA and been humiliated and bend the knee. They've chose not to do that. They're taking this third option, which is exiting. Not great for the institution, not great for the Republican Party. But why are they doing it right now? Why not just wait till the end of the term, right? I think it also spe it speaks partly to how bad things are. I think it also speaks that they just they don't really have much loyalty to Republican leadership. I mean, they are leaving the Republican Party in a lurch. And they're probably doing it to get a job <laughs> right now. Maybe they've been offered a job or they have something uh, kind of lined up. But it's kind of hard to blame them for not wanting to stick around this toxic environment. But I want to go back to what I think the big problem is, this the, the macro story here. Now, there's something that I... I talk about every once in a while, but it, it reminds me of the Obamacare debate. As you may remember, it's been a while, but during the Obamacare debate, there was this thing. In fact, it was the reason a lot of people thought that Obamacare was unsustainable. It's called adverse selection. Adverse selection. What is adverse selection? It, it's a system where sick people sign up and join and healthy young people leave, right? And so you can imagine that a healthcare system where uh, healthy young people check out, so they're not paying their dues, they're not paying their premiums or whatever, and then sick people all sign up in droves to be taken care of. You can see where that is not a great um, system. It's, it's not sustainable, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to collapse eventually. Well, it's kind of the state of the Republican Party. Sick people are signing up and healthy, sane, decent people are leaving. And in the case of Gallagher, young people, um, I think he's young for politics. Uh, not, not great. I'm reminded of, of a couple things as well. Uh, there's a quote from Hayek where he says, and he's talking about the Soviet Union, to be fair, but he says, in a system like that, the worst get on top. Why do the worst get on top? Well, think about the people who succeeded in the upper echelons of the politics in the Soviet Union. There were people who were willing to suck up to who they had to suck up to, but who were willing to sell out and betray whoever they had to sell out and betray. And they were ruthless and they were willing to do whatever it took to get to the top. Kind of similar to what works in today's Republican Party. You, you know, you got to go along with MAGA, you got to go along with Trump. The people who've been willing to kind of bend the knee and humiliate themselves and change everything that they ostensibly used to believe in can be in the game and they can rise to the top. I don't think Gallagher wanted to play that game. Uh, he saw that he wasn't going to make it to the top, which brings me to my second quote, which comes from, it's the famous poem from Yeats where he says, the best lack all conviction and the worst are full of passionate intensity. I mean, again, these people, they're not fighting. They're not sticking around to fight. They're checking out. The best lack all conviction, but the worst are full of passionate mm -hmm. intensity. Uh, that certainly rings true. And I want to now go to our second example of Republican dysfunction on display this week. Um, and it's also, I think, emblematic of how the worst are full of passionate intensity. The motion to vacate after Speaker Johnson has betrayed our conference and broken our rules. This is basically a warning, and it's time for us to go through through the process, take our time, and find a new Speaker of the House that will stand with Republicans and our Republican majority instead of standing with the Democrats. So while people like Mike Gallagher are leaving the party, being pushed out effectively, choosing to leave, who are the rising stars? It, it, it's Marjorie Taylor Greene, right? I mean, 
this is <laughs> this is the other side of the adverse selection. People like Marjorie Taylor Greene see the Republican Party now as a great place to sign up and join and, and politicians and run. You can be like Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene and Matt Gaetz. Um, that's what you're going to get. And look, let's talk a little bit about the substance here. I mean, I am concerned about spending. I am concerned about debt and deficits. But Republicans didn't do anything about that when they controlled it. I mean, when Donald they had the presidency and Congress, and they didn't do anything about spending. In fact, they spent more than anybody else ever. The king of debt, Donald Trump, spent like a drunken sailor. And I'm not even talking about COVID. I'm talking about before COVID. Okay. So now that Republicans don't have the power, they play these games of brinkmanship where they'll you know, threaten to shut down the government or lead to a default. In this case, it was going to be a partial government shutdown until Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, uh, averted that. Now, the interesting thing is that Kevin McCarthy, the former Speaker of the House, was ousted in favor of Johnson for doing exactly the stuff that Johnson's doing now. Marjorie Taylor Greene defended <laughs> To, I guess to her credit, it's a little weird that now she cares about Johnson doing the same thing. But Marjorie Taylor Greene supported Kevin McCarthy. Um, and I think that was the right thing to do, actually. I think they should have just stuck with Kevin McCarthy. I think Republicans would have been better off. They would have had one more seat. He also left. <laughs> He's also deciding to check out after losing the speakership. So they would have had at least one more seat uh, if Kevin McCarthy had stayed. And you know, and I thought at the time that Democrats should have saved him. Um, right now, Democrats are signaling that if Mike Johnson is ousted over trying to fund Ukraine, that Democrats would rescue him and save his speakership. I'm like, you could have had Kevin McCarthy. He would have probably already funded uh, Ukraine. And anyway, it it is a mess. It is a mess. And um, again, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the worst, are full of passionate intensity. It's hard to describe anybody better than that. But look, we've talked about Ken Buck. We've talked about Mike Gallagher. And we've just talked about Kevin McCarthy. Three guys you may not like, you may not agree, probably have done some stuff I don't like. But fairly normal Republicans, um, all of whom were in some way pushed out and then decided it, it ain't worth it. This is a hostile, toxic work environment, and it's not worth sticking around. And instead, you got Marjorie. Marjorie Trader Green. I don't know what we want to call her. Anyway, MTG. That's my show. That's my, uh, my, my, my very short clip uh, edition of the day. Thank you for watching. Don't forget... Go to Matt Lewis Can't Lose and subscribe to the audio podcast. And if you're watching at youtube.com slash Matt Lewis, please like all that good stuff. You know, you could rate, review, subscribe, depending on what platform you're on. Uh, and we'll see you back here very soon. Uh -huh.